This is the next video in a series I'm doing where I explain my entire Notion workspace. And in this video, I'm going to talk about my task database and how it is linked all around my space. To start off with, this is my dashboard, and I did go over my entire dashboard and how it works in a previous video. But as you can see, I have my task database right at the top for today's tasks. If I use my tab bar and go into my review area, you can see I have my areas database. And again, I've done a video on my areas database, but my tasks database is inside my task page of the areas database. So as we enter my tasks area, you can see I have my task database filtered in lots of different ways. Right at the top of my space, you can see I have my tab bar and then I have my tomorrow tasks. So this is my task database, a filtered view of my task database for tomorrow's tasks. Then next to it, I have my recently done tasks. Now this is filtered for tasks that are done. So the done box is ticked. The selection is empty because that is recurring tasks, which I'll cover later on. And then I have tasks that the due date is today. So I don't see all of the tasks that I've recently done. The reason I have this here is if, for example, I tick off a task in my dashboard, it would disappear from my dashboard, but maybe it was by accident. So I can come quickly here, untick that box, and then it will reappear in my dashboard. So when I go back to that dashboard page, you can see all of my tasks are for today. And then if I want to plan for tomorrow, I can then click on that tab bar, go into this page, and then see the task for tomorrow. Now, if I go onto that recently done and tick it, you can now see that in my dashboard, that event, that gym meeting event is now appeared. Then if I tick the tick box, it will disappear from this filtered view and then it will appear in the recently done view. As I scroll down in my task area, you can see I have a calendar view of the task database. So all of these views are the exact same database. This is a calendar view and what this allows me to do is see all of the tasks across my space irrespective of what project they're related to and I can plan out what my day is going to look like. So how many tasks I have in each day. Now some tasks in my task database don't actually have a date on them because they're just ideas. So I have 55 at the moment that don't have a date. So they won't show up in this calendar view. Then when I add a date to that idea, it will then appear in my task view. This calendar is specifically filtered for done is not ticked because again, I don't really want to see all of the tasks that I've done as well as the tasks I'm going to do. When I'm looking at these tasks, you can see I have the name of the task next to the emoji, which tells me what sort of task it is. And then you have the little bit at the bottom, which is time two. So it stands for three weeks, two weeks, one day, two day, two days, four weeks, whatever. The green tick is saying the project is still good. I still have time to do the project. A red cross says the project is actually overdue. So it may be one week and three days overdue. And then if I have a yellow hazard sign, it means it's either today, tomorrow or yesterday, depending on what the words say. So if we go into this publish task, you can see I have a tag at the top of the tasks database. And this tag has publishing events and client. This allows me to add a quick tag to those publishing tasks so I can see at the dashboard level where all of my publishing tasks are. It also allows me to see all of my events and all of my client tasks. Then I have my project relation. So this is a relation between my projects database, which I will go over in another video and my task database. So this is showing me the project this specific published task is related to. Then I have another relation, which is for my notes database. So that is whenever I grab a note, whether I capture a note using the clipper, have an idea and drag anything into my notes database, and I want to relate it to a task, then that will show there. So I can go back to the note if I need to reference anything. Then I have a contacts relation to my contacts database, and this is specifically for business tasks. So if I'm working on a project with a specific individual and I want to know what those projects are, I can relate the task to the contact. So I can go straight to the contact, the contact dashboard from the task. Then we have my areas relation. And for those of you that have seen my areas video, you'll know that I use areas as tags. 
So even though I have the tag select property in my task database, I use the areas as tags for filtering views all over my space. So you can see I've got blogging and content marketing as the area tags. And then if we go to another published task, you can see YouTube and content marketing as the area tags. Then as we scroll down, you can see I have a due date, which is the due date of the task. So when I need to complete this task, and then I have my due date, which is actually a roll up from my projects database. So you can see I have a project related to this task, which is a YouTube video called my notion dashboard walkthrough. And the due date of that project is what is being shown in the roll up. So it's the due date of the project that's being shown, not the due date of the task. This means I can plan my tasks so that they're not after the due date of the video, because if I'm doing a task once it should have been published, then I'm out of time. Then I have a roll up again from the project's database of time two. So instead of just having that date, I can actually see how many days and weeks I have until that project is due. For me, this is just out of convenience because I like being able to look straight away how long have I got left to do it. So now when we go back to that calendar view, you can see all of those different time twos down below the task name. And if we go back to that task that was actually overdue for the project, you can see we've got the cross. So if I go onto the project relation and go into the project, you can see time left is one week and four days. So it's actually one week and four days overdue because there's a red cross on it. So what I need to do is go to the due date you can see it's the 22nd of August, which is actually in the past. So I now need to put that due date ahead of time because this is a project that's actually flexible to whenever I need. And now time left is green. So the due date for the tasks has also changed because it's a roll up. If I go on to a different task, this one is actually related to my dissertation. You can see the due date is different because the due date is specific to my dissertation project, not anything else. Then below the time left, you can see I have a checkbox and that is quite simply just a done checkbox. So when I have completed a task, I just need to push on the tick box and everything else is calculated for me. When I say calculated, that is relating to my project's progress, which I'll go into more depth in my project's video. But basically once I've ticked that box, it will firstly disappear from the view where I need to do the task and it will work out the progress of the project. Now looking at my dashboard, you can see some of these tasks have that tick box ticked, but are still showing. And that is because they are recurring tasks, which relate to the other properties in this database. So you can see if I untick that, it will still show in my dashboard. And as we go down, I'm going to quickly skip the last done and you can see selection. And that says daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly. And that allows me to pick what sort of recurring task this is. Then I have an occurrence, which again relates to first day of the month, second week of the month, anything like that. Then I have the day, so the days of the week, last day of the month and weekday, so I can be very specific about the occurrence of this recurring task. And then I have a couple of formula boxes that allow me to check whether it is due to be recurring or not. In this case, the DWY is ticked, so that stands for day, week or year. So if any of those checks are true, it means that it needs to happen. So in this case, weekly Wednesday, it's a Wednesday and it's a weekly task, which means the W of that formula check is true. So it's ticked. And then my showing tick box, which is the one I'm filtering for in my dashboard view is basically looking at whether the DWY tick box is ticked or the monthly tick box is ticked. If they are ticked, it will show. And this is where the last done date comes in. If the last done date is today, then the showing tick box won't be ticked. So if I change that last done to today, you can see the showing tick box is now unticked and now it disappears from my dashboard view. For daily recurring tasks, I actually recently changed this because I didn't like the three clicks to get rid of the task. So I've turned it into a daily reminders. And all this is, is a database that has a load of checkboxes in it that I can tick when I've done those tasks. Then when I add a new row, so if it's a new day, it will refresh all of those tick boxes. 
A nice little advantage of doing daily reminders like this is when you click onto the daily reminders table, I actually have a history of all of the different daily reminders, all of the tick boxes, etc. So I can see actually I haven't done much touch typing practice recently and I haven't been exercising much either because uh, COVID and I've been on my computer a lot. So if I was to go into any of my areas, YouTube, content marketing, and for this example, I'm going to go into blogging, you see I have a contextual dashboard, which I explained in my areas video, which has notes, projects, and then tasks. And you can see this tasks calendar view is filtered for the area tags. So it's only showing the tasks related to this specific area because of the area relation I have in the task database. And because the task database can have different relations to all the areas, if I was to go into my YouTube space and go down to that task database, it's now only showing the tasks in my task database that's specifically related to YouTube and content marketing. Now I actually have the project relations showing underneath the name of the task, so I know what video the task is related to, and I do that pretty much everywhere in my space whenever I'm showing a task in a calendar view. If you're interested to learn more about how I use Notion, make sure you check out this video over here and I'll see you there.